Hello and welcome to chapter 9, Soil and Agriculture. So basically, uh, at the end of this presentation, you're going to want to have a pretty good understanding of soil formation and just soil in general and how it's very important and uh, the steps we can take to preserve it. First, let's look at soil, the foundation for agriculture. Alright, so soil degradation. Soil degradation basically is the result of something such as forest removal, cropland agriculture, or even overgrazing livestock. And essentially, we need to practice sustainability as to not ruin all of our soil for future generations. Because if the future generations don't have any good, proper, uh, nutritious soil, they won't be able to grow crops and basically everything will deteriorate. Alright, now let's look at industrial agriculture. So basically, that's just modern agriculture and farming. So think machines, fossil fuel emissions, and big fields of corn. So an important term to know is monoculture, which is those big fields of corn. So that's basically when a farm grows one crop, such as corn, that has just a massive yield and they'll get the largest return on. But again, monoculture is a kind of farming technique that does degrade soil. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, a bad feedback cycle. It's negative. It doesn't really work in everyone's favor. All right, let's look at soil formation. So basically, uh, soil formation starts from the breakdown or the weathering of the parent material or the bedrock. So if you look down here, the parent material or the bedrock is that base layer of rock. Next, deposition, decomposition, and accumulation of organic matter occur, forming all these other layers here. All right, so let's quickly go through these different layers. So on the top, we have the O-horizon, or the organic layer. And again, that basically uh, consists of dirt and organic matter that accumulates on the top. Next, we have the A horizon, or the topsoil, and that is the next level down. Then we have the E horizon, or uh, the leaching layer, which is uh, the easiest way to remember that one. That's where the leaching occurs. Uh, below that, we have the B horizon, also known as subsoil. And then down here, we start getting into the weathered parent material, and then the parent material itself. All right, soil color, texture, and pH. So uh, as far as soil color is concerned, a dark brown or a black soil tend to be rich in organic material, while a gray or a white kind of pale uh, soil is going to be low in organic material. Uh, when looking at texture, there are three main types, and then there's one type of combination. So clay. Clay is the smallest uh, particles, and that's why it's very dense, and it seems like you can't actually see any specific pieces of uh, individual particles because they're 0 0.002 millimeters in diameter uh, and the particles are really tight together. Next we have silt which are between 0 0.002 millimeters and 0 0.05 millimeters in diameter, the individual uh, pieces. And then the largest is sand which is 0 0.05 to uh, 2 millimeters in diameter. And so that's why if you're on a beach you can actually see individual grains of sand which you wouldn't be able to see individual, individual excuse me, uh, grains of clay. Uh, and there's something known as loam, which is an even mixture of all three of the uh, clay, silt, and sand. But just as with anything uh, in uh, agriculture, you're going to be hard-pressed to actually find soil that's 100% clay, 100% silt, or 100% sand, as most are a mixture of some combination of the three of them. Now, when looking at pH, small variations in pH change the certain type of plant and the way the plant grows, while any large variation in the pH, so say it got very basic or very acidic, that would just kill the plants totally. Okay, now let's look at erosion and desertification. So erosion occurs faster than soil can form, thus hurting farming. So that's what makes erosion bad. Erosion is a very natural process, but when it starts to hurt farming is when it, uh, the soil erodes too quickly and new soil can't form because soil takes a long time to form. And so then there's a lack of topsoil and thus that hurts farming. Okay, uh, and there are a couple practices that make uh, certain soils more susceptible to erosion. So that could be overcultivation, overgrazing, or clear cutting, which we're going to get into a little later. Okay, now let's look at desertification. So it's basically when 10% or more of uh, soil produ productivity is lost from erosion. And this could occur from like salinization, climate change, erosion, etc. Uh, basically, this ruins what was previously good cropland and makes it unusable. So it's not very helpful. All right, now let's look at the Soil Conservation Service. 
So uh, the Dust Bowl, as the book explains, happened in the 1930s, and that completely ruined a lot of good cropland because of the drought. So basically, as a result of the Dust Bowl, uh, the Soil Conservation Service was created in 1935. Uh, later, in more recent years, uh, soil protection has become more localized, and the SCS was renamed the National Resources Conservation Service, so NRCS. Okay, now let's look at farming methods uh, that help avoid soil degradation. So first is uh, crop rotation, and that's pretty much what it sounds like. So say one year I grow corn in uh, half my farm, and then the uh, same year I grow eggplant on the other half of the farm. That following year, I would plant the eggplant where I had the corn and the corn where I had the eggplant. And this basically adds nutrients back to the soil and keeps it healthy. Okay, next is something known as contour farming, which basically uh, reduces erosion. Think about it like that. It's pretty simple. Uh, and then terracing is a similar idea. This is contour farming, by the way. And uh, terracing looks very similar. So basically, that also just helps reduce erosion by layering it and putting it at different levels. Okay. Uh, now let's look at intercropping. So intercropping is basically, uh, it helps retain soil quality. So that would be planting uh, different crops very close to each other. And that again helps keep the soil healthy. Okay, uh, let's look at shelter belts. So shelter belts basically help prevent against wind erosion. So that's when you plant like bushes or trees along the outsides of your crops. And that uh, prevents wind from sweeping away out of the topsoil. Okay, uh, now let's look at conservation tillage. So it's a pretty general term, but basically what uh, conservation tillage does is it maintains soil quality by not ripping it all apart each season. All right, now let's look at irrigation. So irrigation helps plants thrive, but uh, if it's not done properly, it can also really harm soil. So there are basically two main types of irrigation. There's what's known as conventional irrigation, which is kind of the old school form of irrigation. So that's when you have like a sprinkler system that just kind of shoots water all over the place. And that's really, really inefficient, as you would imagine. Uh, and in more recent news, we have uh, drip irrigation, which is basically consisting of little pipes that would go to individual plants and give them the exact amount of water that they need instead of just shooting water in the air and just kind of making plants fend for themselves. Okay. So now along the same lines of irrigation, there's something known as salinization. So salinization is basically, say I were to irrigate an area that's very prone to evaporation. Uh, and so when that water that I'm using to irrigate evaporates, a lot of, so uh, a lot of salt uh, forms on the topsoil, which completely destroys the land. Uh, this could also happen if you overwater or over-irrigate uh, certain soils as well. But basically salinization is terrible because, as you can see here, this is literally salt cracking the soil and hardening the soil on top, which basically completely destroys that land and makes it unusable for uh, future generations. Okay, now let's look at fertilizers and grazing. So there are two main types of fertilizer. Uh, the first is organic, so think of compost and just uh, decomposed organic matter. That's really, really good for crops and it helps everything grow, and plus it's recycling and it's good for the environment. Uh, a problem is there's another type of fertilizer fertilizer, excuse me, known as inorganic fertilizer, which is synthetic or mined fertilizers. And the problem with that is uh, inorganic fertilizers uh, are more prone to erosion and runoff. So the problem is uh, if they erode and they run off, that's when you have eutrophication occur, and it's this feedback loop that just destroys the ecosystem. Also, uh, overgrazing hurts soil. So basically overgrazing just prevents biomass from regrowing because you have all the animals, one, eating all of the uh, plants and the crops, and then they're also stepping on it and hardening the soil and compacting it. It makes it hard for any uh, new plants to regrow. Okay, now let's look quickly at agricultural policy. So sometimes policy can help agriculture but hurt the environment. So think of the example the book talks about destroying uh, wetlands to uh, have more farmland, because wetlands are so good for cultivating crops uh, people used to actually destroy wetlands to make more uh, agricultural land, but as we know now, wetlands are incredibly important, and so that's really destructive. Uh, there's something known as the Conservation Reserve Program, and that basically pays for farmers to not grow on highly erodible land. And so that's a really, really interesting, really, really good program, because uh, basically the Conservation Reserve Program literally pays farmers to maintain their soil and not do anything risky. Okay, conclusion. 
So basically, the thing you're going to want to take away from this presentation is that soil is integral to our existence. We need soil. It grows our plants, and it's just really, really important. So basically, we have to figure out how to preserve it for the future generations so they can grow crops and succeed just as we have. All right, so next chapter in Chapter 10, we're going to look at agricultural, biotechnology, and the future of food.